Hello there, my name is Alice and welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to show you four different sketching techniques that you can use in your sketchbook to kind of change up your style, do something a little different, add a different aesthetic, um, just fun little things. So the first is going to be sketching with tritones. Tritones are colored pencils that have three different colors in. Um, tritones are co by Koinor, but there are definitely other brands that do multicolored pencils, but I pretty, I'm pretty sure all the ones that I have are by Koinor. They also have some jumbo ones that have multiple different colors in, like um, more, sorry, more different colors in, and they're just really, really fun to sketch with. They add a really cool variety of colors to your sketch without having to carry around as many pencils, if that, you know, like you can add this really nice kind of varied touch to just a little sketch, which is really nice and in my opinion just adds a really nice touch to something simple. You can definitely sketch in just regular colored pencil as well. I love to do that but um, ever since finding the tritones I've really switched towards those because it just adds a little bit of extra depth and texture. I also like to use these under watercolor or over just a plain watercolor background. You can use these and then do a watercolor wash over the top and add in some white highlights. There are so many different ways that you can use these in your sketchbook um, in such a creative manner. When I use them I usually start with a lighter color usually a light yellow but sometimes a light gray or a light blue depending on the color scheme of what I'm working on to establish the basic shapes and the underlying composition then I'll go in with like a mid-tone and I will start to define the different like areas so in the monstera leaves like I would start to define where the holes were and things like that and then I'll go over one more time with a darker color and really start refining some of those details I'll darken some areas some areas I'll still leave light because then you can add some depth and shading in that line work and then when the sketch is kind of finalized in that way I'll go in and add a little bit of shading with some of the previous colors and in this case I went in with a dark green and I added in a, just a really dark color pencil background. I wasn't too worried about having texture in there. It's just a sketch. I'm not going for perfect. I'm just trying to get this idea in my head out. And also I really like the texture. I just think it's kind of fun and interesting. Um, so I just built that up. And as you can see, you get a really cool variant of color and gradients when you're using the tritone pencils as opposed to just a colored pencil. So I really enjoy them. I definitely recommend looking into any kind of multicolored pencil as a sketching tool. There's also rainbow ones that are full on rainbow. They're so much fun. And I, it's just a really fun thing. And it kind of takes me back to my childhood too, because there were always those like rainbow pencils when I was a kid. I feel like I saw those. So these are like the artist version of those. So here to introduce the sponsor of today's video is my cat Muse, who just jumped right in and sat down and was like, yeah, I'm going to take this class with you. So if you haven't heard of Skillshare, this was Muse's first time uh, on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community and they have so many classes for any kinds of creators or cat raiders. Haha, <laughs> was that funny? No, it wasn't funny. Um, but there's social media, there's all kinds of different art from drawing to painting to like this one, which it, these are the classes that I'm always drawn to, which are about sketchbooks and sketchbook keeping. And this class specifically is by Mike Lowry and it's how to start and keep a daily sketchbook. And the intro was really funny and it kind of like drew us both in and fascinated Muse. So really whatever level you're at, whether you are a small little 11 month old cat or you know someone who's been making art since they were born, you can always learn something new from Skillshare because it's always great to hear another human's perspective. Since it's curated specifically for learning, there are no ads to distract you or your cat while you're watching the class. So if you want to be as inspired as Muse and I were, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box is going to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. As you can see, he was digging it, I was digging it. So yeah, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's move on to the next sketching technique. The next technique that I'm going to show you is sketching in watercolor pencils. I love sketching in watercolor pencils. It's definitely one of my favorite techniques. I use it all the time. I've been using it for a really long time now. And it just works really well because you can erase watercolor pencils. And I meant to mention this in the previous one, but there is a specific type of eraser that works better with colored pencil. And it's like 
the they're like white rubber erasers the one that I have is by Faber Castell but I've heard the magic rub ones work as well with colored pencils and I need to get some and try them out because I used to not like magic rub erasers and that's probably because I was using them for the wrong thing so yeah look sometimes sometimes you're wrong and you're just using things wrong um, but those do work on these but not quite as well as regular colored pencils pencils as regular colored pencils however you can also use water to kind of smudge and blur things out and you can use the same techniques as I was talking about in the tritones where you start with a lighter color to do the initial sketch and then you build up on top I always try to build up in layers in my sketches and I do the exact same thing with the watercolors. So I start with that light color and I create the underlying sketch and then I'll usually add some water to kind of blur everything out and you can like brush it around to kind of create a little bit of shading and it's just a really nice way to soften your lines and blend everything together. Even if you're just doing a quick sketch, you don't have to be like as detailed as this, you know, and you can just add some shading real quick. It's, it's just a very cool and fun way to sketch and you don't have to add water if you don't want to you can just leave it standalone as colored pencil so then I go in with a darker color and I start defining the lines more and adding in some darker shading um, as you can see I made a little mistake on the ear on the right and you can see that it doesn't erase as cleanly as uh, with the tritones um, but you can kind of add water and also I turned it into the hair so I want to make a whole video on fixing mistakes in art because there's this whole process that I go through where I sit down and I think when there's a mistake like I immediately go through this like checklist in my head of like how to fix it or like what to do before I panic so I want to make a video and talk about that but once I've put on the darker tones I usually put in maybe like a secondary tone for this I went with more of like a seafoam green and I mixed that in to add a little bit of variety um, and then I started blending it all together and I'm definitely more controlled with this blending because this is more of the finalized version and I don't want the lines to all blur out and then I usually just go through and build up on top a little bit more depending on where I need it some parts won't get blurred out at all some parts I'll go through and blur out a little bit it. I usually add the details to the eyes. This is really great for detailing eyes really quickly. Um, and then I realized I forgot to do the little shell because she's a little mermaid. And I really like how this piece came out. I love sketching in watercolor pencil. Like I, if you have not tried sketching in watercolor pencil, just do it because it's, it's a really, really, it's just fun. And it's, yeah, I, it's fun. That's, that's all. It's fun. <laughs> um, so I drew the scales. I added in a little bit of water, um, to, soften it I didn't add too much because I didn't want it to get too blurred out and then because it's me I had to add metallic to her scales and I used a little white gel pen to add in some highlights and that is how I use watercolor pencil to sketch and if you have any more questions about watercolor pencil I do also have a couple tutorials that I will link below so the third technique is really fun, I, I think, and it's sketching with marker pens. So specifically, I use these like thin felt tip pens. The ones that I love are by Papermate. And this is a really fun and loose way that kind of combines the concept of sketching with pen and also like a watercolor pencil because you don't have to, but I do layer and add water, water to soften it out because these are water-based. So I start with a really, really loose sketch and I do the same thing as I've done with the color pencil and the watercolor watercolor pencil anytime you're drawing with color this is a really helpful thing to do is to just start with the lightest color that will work so I started with the yellow and because I'm going to add water I've really been I've added a lot of ink to here because I know that when I add water the more ink that's on there the better depending on your paper this is going to blur out more or less know that in almost every case your like I don't want to say brush strokes, pen strokes are going to show through. So be intentional with your mark making. I like to be kind of scribbly with my mark making, but if you don't like that effect, then use hatch marking. Like be, be intentional with what you want it to look like because it generally will show through. A smoother paper is going to blend more and a paper that's a little bit more absorbent, has a little bit more tooth, that will tend to show the pen marks more but you can usually blend out and get this lighter variant of the color and it looks really it's a really fun effect I think and 
one thing that I do recommend is if you want something to blur out more than most that it can, just let the water sit on there for as long as possible. As as it absorbs, um, it will blur, blur out more and more and more. There is usually only a point that things will blur out. Like these aren't watercolor pens. So yeah, uh, I just, I really like the combination of this like pen drawing with mark making and then adding water to soften it up. Then you can go back over the top with more pen. You can build up secondary layers and add water to those secondary layers. And I usually do my final layer in just pen without adding any water just to add in some like final crisper details. And I'll try to avoid kind of the, the edge lines when I'm adding in the final water uh, designs. And I just think that it's, I don't know, I think it looks really cool. And I, I, I enjoy doing this technique. I feel like I should do it a little more often. And as with most of my sketches that are in color, even if they're not in color, honestly, I usually add some kind of white highlight at the end. I like to use white gel pen, but there's loads of other things that you can use on top of this to add in different dimensions, different shades, colored pencils, pastels, all kinds of things. Um, definitely experiment with mixed media in your sketchbook. Don't be afraid to play around. That's something that I have really loved and enjoyed and found so much joy in. So yeah, that is sketching with felt tip marker pens. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that. And we'll move to the last technique, which is paint resist. Also, it just started raining. So if you can hear the rain in the background, I hope that you're relaxed. So I got this white Crayola crayon from my sister and I do this in various ways, but this is actually the first time I've used crayon for it. In the past, I've usually used masking fluid, but I thought crayon would be more accessible and also really fun. So I used the crayon to draw some stars kind of the same way you know you did when you were a kid and you did crayon resist with paint it's really fun but any kind of wax based product this should work with but crayons honestly really effective so I added then a layer of watercolor and you can see it resisted and was really cool and then I built up a second layer of the wax pencil and I added in kind of some background areas where I kind of smudged it with my finger where I was hoping that the original watercolor would show through and then I tried very hard even though I couldn't really see what I was doing. I was like trying to press the pencil really hard or crayon really hard so you could see. I drew an eye, just like the basic shape of an eye. And then I filled in the white so it would stay, like the white of the eye, so that it would stay the lighter color of this galaxy background. And then I painted the whole thing again with a darker purple and ah, this is the magic. That looks so cool. Doesn't that look cool? I think that looks so cool. Um, and I dropped in all of the different colors because I was going for this like eye floating in a galaxy kind of thing. This technique is definitely inexact because you can't really see where you're drawing that easily, but it's definitely really fun and it's a great way to loosen up and just kind of get the ideas flowing and not worry too much about what it's going to look like in the end. I kept it really basic. Definitely recommend doing that. And then to define everything a little bit more, I went over it at the end. Um, so I used this white like wax, I think it's a wax pencil. Oh, they're China markers. They're called China markers. And they'll basically write on anything. And so I used a white one on top because it would layer over the crayon areas just fine to emphasize some areas and to add in some more stars. I thought about using some silver gel pen, but I didn't end up doing it. But I probably should have honestly and then I used a black china marker to add in an eyebrow and also just the crease of the eyebrow so yeah that is my final technique that you can use to spice up your sketches change up the aesthetic of your sketchbook and just try something a little bit different so I hope that you enjoyed this video if you did definitely check out my other socials these are all of the pictures that I did um yeah I stream on twitch five days a week I upload on youtube when I can I try my very best we're working on it and I love you guys so so much thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day bye guys mm -hmm.